The third important situation that may happen in, the, in uh, hematogenous or in osteomyelitis is the chronic osteomyelitis. Usually that, uh, which, uh, this situation appears uh, in some cases or some conditions where the uh, immunity of the patient or the, uh, of the host uh, is low and uh, we have some predisposing factors as malnutrition, diabetes, uh, uh, lack of correct treatment. This is very important when we do not treat uh, the acute hematogenous osteomyelitis in a good procedure, well-defined uh, procedures uh, or according to the general guidelines, we may continue to, uh, to have the chronic osteomyelitis. In this situation, the bacteria, they, uh, we, uh, there are uh, a large number of bacteria that may cause chronic osteomyelitis as Staphylococcus aureus and as well Streptococcus pyogeny. But uh, some bacteria as anaerob anaerobic bacteria and the Escherichia chocolate play an important role in this situation. And the idea, uh, which is different from uh, acute osteomyelitis, is that the, the germs they may, um, that cause this infection, they may change from time to time. Um, uh, that means we may have, uh, uh, at the beginning of the chronic of osteomyelitis or the beginning of the discovery of this infection, we may have Escherichia uh, coli, for example. After two or three months of treatment, we may have another, uh, another uh, organism as Pseudomonas aeruginosa or Staphylococcus aureus. The cause of this change is the, the presence of sinuses that connect the uh, infectious bone, infectious bone, or infected bone with the surface by the sinus that, uh, that uh, let the discharges go out of the body. The pathological changes that characterize uh, chronic osteomyelitis are, are very important. First of all, we have the KFTs, bone KFTs in, in the area of infection. The presence of sequestra or like this bone, uh, uh, dead bony parts, uh, the, uh, which are the main cause of the continuity of the infection in the chronic osteomyelitis. And the dead parts are a local, uh, a very good local environment to um, uh, to to make a, a, a bacterial colonization away from uh, antibiotic uh, antibiotic therapy because we do not have uh, blood circulation in this dead area. So the presence of sequestra is very important uh, to co to cause. Uh, or in the pathological changes in chronic osteomyelitis. The involvement is the thickening or the newborn formation by the periosteal reaction and bone destruction, as we have said. The presence of sinuses that drain, uh, that drain the pus uh, to the skin, as we see here in this area. Usually, the presence, as we, as we see here in this uh, picture, we see that the presence of sequestra uh, cause uh, an area of uh, divas uh, or devascularized, devascularized area of bone that can uh, that allow the germs to adhere to it and to cause uh, uh, abscesses that are not uh, treatable by only on, uh, antibi antibiotic therapy, inter um, uh, even intravenously. In radiological study, we see uh, um, an obvious or local osteoporosis in the region of infection, with a patch loss of density and, so, and heterogeneic osteoperiosteal uh, thickening with sclerosis uh, of the surrounding bone. Uh, we may have, uh, we may do a sinogram, that is the injection of the radio-opaque, um, sterile radio-opaque uh, materials in the uh, sinus opening and, and make radiograph to see uh, or to identify the pathway of this sinus and its connection to the local, uh, to the area of uh, bone infection. Bone scan is useful, it's very sensitive, as we have said, in acute osteomyelitis, but it's not specific. 
unless we use gallium and indium labeled uh, leukocytes, as we have said, in acute osteomyelitis. And CT scan and MRI are helpful, really helpful, not in the diagnosis because the usual diagno the diagnosis is very clear, but to determine to the, uh, determine the uh, the way of operation or the planning uh, or to plan the operation and to, to see the, the extent of the destruction, bone destruction, and the presence of uh, abscesses and the presence of sequestra in this area. Uh, blood investigations usually are normal. In this situation, we have two phases. The phase where the, the sinus is open and the um, uh, purulent materials or the pus uh, um, is evacuated from this, uh, the area of infection, the, uh, the signs and symptoms are usually are uh, minimal, uh, uh, usually are really minimal, so the patient does not complain of any fever, of any pain, of any redness. But when the sinus is closed, the, uh, the opening of the sinus or the, or the hiatus is closed, uh, there will be a, um, uh, a accumulation of pus in the area of infection, so uh, we, have, we may have an acute uh, or acute signs and symptoms from swelling, redness, local heat, and general temperature, and the uh, blood investigation usually, uh, blood investigations usually uh, rise uh, in this period of uh, of infection, as CRP, ASR, and white blood cells. But uh, in the, between the flares, uh, the acute flares they may be near normal. And uh, organism cultures or the bacterial cultures, they change from time to time, and we should do uh, a repeated, uh, uh, repeated uh, the tests of culture and sensitivity because they change from time to time. The use of PCR is very helpful to, to define the, uh, the organism or the bacteria and to orient the, uh, the treatment with, antibiotic, with antibiotics. And we should always uh, try to uh, identify systemic disorders and treat them to, uh, to be able to, to, uh, to treat or to increase or augment the uh, host immunity. The treatment of chronic osteomyelitis usually uh, does not depend only on antibiotics. It's not, not at all sufficient. And the uh, abscess drainage is not at all sufficient, as in acute uh, osteomyelitis. We should have local treatment, aggressive local treatment by curtage, by curtaining the area of infection and bone death, and that bone, and to uh, to um, excise the sinuses and to uh, to close the area of loss of skin cover. We should. Uh, it's very normal in chronic osteomyelitis to do uh, repeated debridement to treat the area because we may not have, we, we may not be able to uh, uh, to excise all the dead uh, the dead bone from the first from, from the first first debridement, and it's normal to make a recurrent or repeated debridement. We may we may use as we see here in this picture we may use antibiotic uh, antibiotic uh, impregnated uh, beads that contains um, a concentration of um, concentrated antibiotics that helps a local dis uh, the local discharge of antibiotics with high doses uh, which are not toxic for the patient and they treat it uh, locally and we should always use uh, cover the area of um, of deficiency of uh, skin deficiency by flaps by uh, local flaps muscle muscle cutaneous flaps free flaps or free, free flaps or uh, vascularized flaps and we may use the VAC system that use the continuous aspiration of uh, the discharges from the local defect that uh, that help the, the, the area to to have granulation, rapid granulation tissue generation.